What a beautiful day in France, looking at the Pyrenees and the beautiful hills and the gorgeous rooftops. France is just a gorgeous place. They have so many good fruits and vegetables. Is there anything to eat? I don't want something from the refrigerator. I want something fresh, gorgeous, and orange. Oranges, yes! Yeah. What's up, everybody? It's Missy Barr, and I'm here today going to do a still life. So got inspired by all the beautiful fruits and vegetables that my friend had at his house in France, specifically Saint Laurent de Chardin. I think that's how you say it, but anyway. So let's get started. We're going to do a still life of fruit that are the color wheel colors, just so we can review that a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a bowl and I'm gonna draw with my crayons. And let's see, I think I'll take a nice blue, can I put a, a nice, white bowl to hold my fruit and it should be about the length of my hand okay make sure it's not too small so it can fit something right and i'm going to just choose my different colors Let's see i'm going to do maybe an apple maybe an orange yeah and notice how i'm overlapping so i'm not putting them you know just there without realistically you would see kind of overlapping going on right and then we're going to do some let's see blueberries yeah so we to blueberries mm. uh, there's no really big blueberries but mine are big I have some in the refrigerator put them in my cereal yes okay now we're gonna go ahead and do an avocado or grape or lime Let's do a lime. Okay, so here we're gonna put maybe like this. So it's kind of like a lemon, but facing that way, right? Okay, and maybe some grapes. Okay, for a purple. So I'm gonna do this. It's like the letter C. And maybe it's kind of the same way you do scales on a fish. Okay, great. So then I need to put a table because it's gotta sit on something. Still life always sits on something, right? All right, so let's see, I think I'll do, hmm, maybe orange or maybe brown, any color you want. I kind of just wanna keep this nice and warm. And then yellow in the background. Okay, so we're ready to paint. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my brushes. And then my flat brush, it's about, about that size and starting with yellow because yellow always gets dirty first Ooh. okay so i'm just gonna put the color on i always trace around i got some in my purple oh, no. okay. now i'm going to go ahead and do orange mm, like this one i love these watercolors because you can choose so many different hues of color. You know, instead of just those 12 that they used to get us. <laughs> okay, they still sell those, they're good. But I like these. Okay, I'm gonna do an apple and this nice beautiful red. Brush, it's not cooperating, okay. Very careful, okay. So now I'm gonna switch my brush to do my cool colors. I'm going to start with purple, nice and dark, I can go right over my crayon. That's why I use crayon because it's a water resist and the water resist won't let that go through. Alright, and then I'm going to rinse that off and go to green. Really rinse it up because purple has red in it, and if it mixes with green, sometimes it turns brown, and we don't want that right now. Maybe later, if we did a tree with a pretty brown trunk, or chocolate, or a beautiful lion. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some blue, really dark blue for my blueberries. I might mix two together. Now, 
These are looking great. Oh, I'm gonna do the background too, using a bigger brush because bigger spaces use a bigger brush. Okay, so I'm gonna use some yellow just to be some, you know, kind of bright. You can leave it white. I always like to add color though. And I'm gonna do some orange on the table. Has a lot of water too. Okay. So now I'm going to come back in and do some shading. <gasps> my favorite thing. Okay, so I'm going to come in and use my color wheel to see what my analogous colors will be so I can add some shadows. So for my lemon, I'm going to use green because it's next to it, analogous. So just a really light green and then just put it where I think a shadow would be, right? So just right here, very, like people shouldn't notice it. They should be just like, wow, that looks so dimensional. How did you do that? With analogous colors. Okay, blend it in. Let's get a little water and just mix that in there. All right. Need a little bit more, like right where the orange starts. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to my orange and do the same thing. All right, and I'm gonna get just a wet brush and rip it off and make that shadow. I'm gonna come back to this one in a minute. I'm gonna get purple for this one. I'm using my color wheel because I know that purple is next to red and it'll make a nice shadow. Oh, that's a good one. Here. Just think, okay, so the sun's coming from this way or the light source, and that way I'm just gonna get clean water and go through around. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now we're gonna get purple for blue too, because they're next to each other, and purple tends to be a darker color. So I'm just gonna add little dots on each side of each blueberry. Okay, that looks bad right now, but fine. I'm gonna move it in to each one. We're gonna add something else later, so I'm gonna keep, go ahead and keep working on this, and I'll come back in just a minute to add that one last little pitch, okay? Okay, I'm back, and I just wanted to show you how the final product is and how we added a shadow here. Also added a shadow to the bowl. Did that with some gray, and this was just a darker orange. So it's just those two little things can make such a big difference from a flat work of art like this where you don't see a whole lot of dimension, just like flat, to something like this. It feels round, right? And then I added some white for the light. We want to wait till it all dries before you put that on. And that's it. Let's see. Yeah. So I hope you had a good time and I'll see you next time. Enjoy doing still life. Like and subscribe. Bye.